Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I hope you are having a good week. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to the channel, for listening to the videos, for the recordings, um, and for all of my weird and wonderful stuff. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Okay, well, today's video is by special request. Thank you very much for requesting this. Um, I was thinking about doing this actually last week and then I thought to myself, no, I'll do a couple of videos about herbs, then I'll go back to doing this. Um, but then someone requested it and that's interesting because it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted me to uh, talk about it. So maybe it will benefit you guys i'm sure it will benefit you guys and benefit those of all all those of you who want to learn about spirituality and who are into it okay so the question was um how do you recognize guidance from spirit so i'm gonna give you guys and what i have seen in my own experience and what i believe is the key um, to getting guidance from spirit and the right, the correct guidance. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to do this as quickly as I can and not make it into a very long video, even though I know I always end up talking for half an hour. <laughs> but I'll try my best to to um, keep it um, keep it uh, like simple. So the first thing that I want you guys to know when you want to get guidance from spirit. It is very important for your vibration to be high. And by that I mean your uh, heart and soul and spirit, okay, and your mentality must be of a higher nature, okay, to receive the guidance from the right spirits and correct guidance and for you to get the most power. You can get guidance from all kinds of spirits if your vibration is low as well because a human being will get uh, guidance from spirit, okay? But the guidance will be different for someone who has a low vibration from someone who has a high vibration. Someone with a low vibration will get guidance that will push them towards raising their vibration. So they will find that they get guidance that makes things go wrong for them all the time. <laughs> Because they have to learn, okay, lessons and they have to go through hardship before they're elevated to a certain level. Me personally, my powers and my level of spiritual power, I have not arrived at overnight. Yes, I do have it in my DNA, in my inheritance, in my heritage from both my parents, but I did not, um, they are not as, I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've not, uh, been as powerful as I am. They're not as powerful as I am because they chose to follow a more of an academic line. However, I do have grandparents who are as powerful, I'm, you know, even more powerful than I am now. And I have other relatives who are more powerful than I am now or were more powerful than I am now because they have chosen to follow the spiritual path and raise their vibration high. Now, what does it mean to raise your vibration high? So to raise your vibration high, you have to be very fair within yourself. It has been talked about in all religions and all re religions root have a spiritual. They are spiritual because you believe in God. Nobody has seen God with their eyes, but they have they know that God exists. Right. So it is still a spiritual thing. Even if someone believes in God, they know for sure that God exists, but they've never seen God. They have seen God's creation and they have seen God's work in their own lives. They know that God exists. That's a spiritual belief. So spirituality itself, we have to raise our vibrations high. And all of the religions have talked about this, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, all other kinds of religions, uh, even Buddhism, even Hinduism, all the religions, they talk about this, okay? And it is reaching a level of spirituality where your vibration is very high. They try to raise our vibrations. And how, how you raise your vibration is by wanting the best for everyone, operating in the energy of love. Love is the most powerful energy in the universe and I go a lot, a, lot, on, a, lot, a lot about this on my channel because I believe that love is the thing that made me this powerful. 
that has made me into a position where I can actually affect people's lives, change people's lives to the better, heal people from things that they have not found healing for anywhere else. When they come to me, they find a different experience. Most of them get healed completely from things that they have been years trying to sort out for years. And the reason is not because I'm all that or I'm amazing or I'm this or that. It's because my vibration is high and I operate from an energy of love. So to raise your vibration, you have to operate in the energy of love. And that is you approach everything with a loving energy, whether it's good or bad. Say someone does something good for you, you love them for it. Some, someone says does something bad to you, try and understand why they have done it and go beyond the uh, the superficial see what complications this person has in their lives what has caused them to act in this way it doesn't mean that you won't teach people lessons if they come against you and they try and hurt you yes you do defend yourself and that's allowed in spirituality but when you think about that person for example, I have had people, I'll give you an example of something negative that I have operated in the energy of love, okay, that I've approached with energy of love. I've had people who have done black magic on me in my lifetime, okay, and they have done curses. They've tried to curse me. They've tried to hex me. They've tried to curse me. Anyone regular would hate someone like this and would wish them dead or wish them hurt, harmed, yeah? But me... I don't do that, do that. I think about it as what is it that I can do because I know what people do. I might not talk about it, but I know which, what everyone does in their own private time. If they want to hurt me, I know I can see it and I get knowledge of it and I am so grateful for it. It makes me cry but because God reveals it to me. But the thing is, when God reveals it to me, he knows that I'm not going to damage that person. I'm going to Keep my vibration high and operate in the energy of love, okay? So when I protect myself and I do a, a curse breaking or a, a curse removal or a hex breaking or hex removal or obstacle removal from me that someone else has caused, when I say people return it to sender and they say, do this, that to the person, do that to the person, no, I will say to God, I give it to you. You do with it what you can. And in my mind, the way I think about it is that what, what is that person going to learn from this curse being sent back to them? What is it? Is it going to help them ascend? Because if it's not going to help them ascend, I'd rather not hurt anybody. I'd rather just get, get rid of it. Okay, I'd rather not reflect it back. But if it helps the person ascend, that is where you operate in the energy of love. So you, everything you do becomes for the higher for the higher good and that is the main thing that helps you open up and receive guidance and power from the spiritual realm when you look at someone else who is spiritual if you see them as competition you still have work to do you still have a lot to learn you still have a lot to learn in your own spiritual life that will help you elevate to a position where you feel like you are a father or a mother to everyone that you want everyone to succeed. That is high vibrational. You want everyone to do well. You want everyone to heal, to win in the end, to become wealthy, to find love, to find healing, to be beautiful. And you don't care when you're high vibrational, you don't care if someone gets a bigger blessing than you or not. You operate in an energy of love. You understand that everything like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشرم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما كان خلقكم إلا كنفس واحدة صدق الله العظيم So it means we have created you all and all of creation as, as if you were one person. You have been created as one. And now from all of the new age things and if you realize people are starting to realize and notice that that's the truth. Everyone and everything is connected. So if you hurt someone else, it is bound to hurt you some one way or another. Okay, so you reach a level where you become so high vibrational, so loving in your energy that you operate in the energy of God. You give things to God if you believe in God. 
You have to believe in a higher in higher powers in God. That is, there's something that is all all seeing, all knowing for your powers to really open up. They won't open up. The universe will not trust you with power if you do not, if you deny the existence of the creator. We have to understand that there is a creator, there is a God, and operate in the energy of love. Like I said, everything you do becomes for love. Why people get results when they come to me for work is because I love every client. I love them as if they are my own flesh and blood. Any client that has dealt with me will tell you that when they, when they talk to me, when they come to me for healing or when they come to me for help, they literally feel that I actually care about them. It's not about the money. It's not about um, them, anyone bigging me up or telling me anything or doing anything for me. It's more about what I can do for the people. What chance do I have in improving that person's situation? So you have to raise your vibration very highly, okay, for this to happen. Now, another thing that you need to do when you understand you want to get guidance from spirit is you have to be open to the guidance. So you have to open yourself up and relax and understand that the guidance can come to you in many different ways. It doesn't have to be the way that you want. It doesn't have to be the way that you think it's going to come through. It's just going to come to you. Some people get their guidance through dreams and they understand through dreams. Some people have spirits talk to them. Some people have their, their eyes they can see. Some people they can hear with their ears. So the most important thing for you to receive guidance from spirit is to be open to all ways for this guidance to come by all means you can specify for spirit you can say i want you to guide me through my dreams i want you to tell me in my ear i want you to 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 make me see with my eyes but you will reach a point after you start getting this where you, all of your senses become like something that you are getting guidance through so you get guidance through your dreams, then you get guidance through seeing with your eyes, then you get gui guidance through hearing, and then you get guidance through feeling with your skin, you get feelings in your body. Everything that you, you, be, you have to relax and open yourself up to that guidance. It can come to you in any way that spirit finds is best to communicate with you. So that's the spiritual guidance, okay? When your vibration is high, the guidance that comes to you will become very strong. To get that guidance and receive guidance from spirit, you also have to be, be very brave. You have to be a brave person. Okay? And that is like, you have to have this, uh, this attitude of nothing I see or hear or know about will shake me. And believe me, it is hard when you start getting this guidance, you can, you can feel shaken at some point, especially in the beginning. But if you are strong and you show strength and resilience, the guidance continues and it intensifies. Spirit will only give us what we can deal with. And they will only reveal to you what you can actually deal with emotionally, mentally, physically and spiritually. So to deal with that, you have to be strong within yourself and be brave to receive that guidance and open yourself up on all channels. Another thing about spiritual guidance and how to, to know that this is spiritual guidance and to receive is when you are at peace. You feel peace within yourself. You feel peace with everyone else. And like I said, your vibration is high. Guidance from good spirits always comes with peace and love and healing. You will find that your life will become moving on a path where there is only love and light and healing. That is when you receive the most powerful guidance from spirit. And all of the big masters, the prophets, peace and blessings be upon him, all of the salihin, the people who are good, they, they have that love in their hearts. I have yet to meet, meet, for example, a Sufi Sheikh or 
anyone. I've seen many of the Prophets السلام, in my visions, in my dreams, in my ru'yas. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, I've seen him 29 times. Um, Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, I've seen him seven times. Jesus Christ. I've seen Jesus Christ, I've seen him in my dream, I've seen him in my, in my room, yeah, at home. I saw him standing in front of me by my bed one day when I was upset. Obviously, when he appeared to me, if I was someone who was a coward, I would have probably, my heart would have stopped. <laughs> but because I have the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that God is the most high, and that all of these people and energies are his creation, are, are from his spirit, I am strong. I, I was strong. And he came to me, spiritual guidance will come to you when you're at a very low point in your life. So you have to know, if you believe in God, He will bring aid and help to you when you are really low. When you are very high, after that you, raise, you are raised to a very high level. When you are raised to a very high level, then it becomes like you, the spiritual guidance is all the time. Every minute of every second of every day, you operate in a spiritual energy. That is why, for example, you go and you see our Sufi sheikhs, for example, or, for example, in Christianity, you have the priests or you have the rabbis in the Jewish religion. Um, all of the people who are, are like holy, considered holy or considered close to God by other people and have earned that. And they have the powers to show for that. Heal, powers of healing, powers of visions, the sight, they know the future. Powers of um, uh, being able to, to affect people's lives in a positive way. All of these, they operate in an energy of love and they become very high vibrational. That is why the sheikhs and all of these people who are, are, are spiritual, people don't ask them, why did you do this or why did you do that? They just obey them. They obey their instructions. I don't, I, I'm not saying obey anyone. You have to be in obedience to someone who you feel in your heart is true and real. Someone who can prove to you, for example, like if you see my channel, for example, you can see that everything I say comes to pass. I've not earned this by being a, a selfish or being deceitful or being a liar to anyone or hurting anyone. I've earned this by, tr by going through true trials and suffering. And I have reached the level that I am in, not because I am favored just like that. No, I was favored after I was tested and was found that I was not really shakable. My faith was not shakable. So then God started to open to me his knowledge. So to receive good spiritual guidance, you have to become in an unshakable state of faith. That is why Everything you do becomes spiritual. That is why, for example, in our sheikhs, our, uh, when you look at a sheikh, a Sufi sheikh, you will understand. They have this aura around them where you have to obey them. And you have to, even me now, yes, I can see the future, I can do anything. But if I see another sheikh, I will bow down, I will kiss their hand. If you are not able to do that, then know that you still have work to do. Okay, if you're not able to humble yourself in front of someone else and kiss that person's hand because you feel that they are close to God or they're doing something good, then know that you have work to do on yourself. You still have a lot to learn. Okay, and I have seen that. I've seen people in my life who have said, I'm not going to kiss anyone else's hand. Why should I kiss anyone else's hand? Why should I bow down? In my heart, I used to think, don't you have any respect in your body, in your, in your spirit? Don't you have any respect for someone else? Why wouldn't you kiss someone's hands? What's wrong with that? It's all about the ego. Letting go of the ego will open you up to the most powerful spiritual gifts. That's why the sheikhs and the mullahs and the spiritual masters, they favor the humble ones. They favor the ones that will obey them and be obedient and be understanding of them and be sweet to them and be soft with them because they know that that person can learn, that person can be a prodigy, that person can be someone am amazing in the future, okay? 
And I have seen when people were in their ego and said, I won't, I won't obey this sheikh or I won't do this, that some of them have passed on before being able to reach a point of understanding where they're able to do that. And when they're on the other, other side, they go through literal hell, okay? Their ego gets broken on the other side, okay? And they get their noses rubbed in the dirt on the other side, okay? It's not about... This, this sheikh or this mullah being more important than you. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's more important and who's closer to him. But if you see a spiritual energy with someone, humble yourself. And when it comes to sheikhs and people who are high in spirit, if you are not able to respect your elders and respect those who are more knowledgeable than you and even respect your colleagues and peers, like I said, even if I see someone and they're less than me spiritual, I will humble myself and kiss their hand. I kiss children's hands, babies' hands. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani, radiallahu anhu, used to seek blessing from children. He used to go to a child and seek blessing from that child because the child is in a pure energy. So what I'm, the point that I'm trying to make here is to let go of the ego. That is when the gift really opens up. Is when someone lets go of their ego and they can actually come upon themselves and humble themselves. Because if they don't do it in this life, if we don't do this in this life, when we move on to the next life, we are humbled by a more powerful, more lasting energy that makes you... I've seen people who wouldn't kiss a sheikh's hand, for example, or a spiritual person's hand or be obedient to them when they pass on to the next life. They are put in situations where they have to serve that person spiritually. Their spirit comes to serve that sheikh spiritually. And they become under that sheikh's command until they learn the lesson, until they actually reach a point. And I've not only seen this with sheikhs and with Mullahs, even people who you would not consider are special. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's special. So we have to humble ourselves in front of everyone. Not just the sheikhs or the mullahs. When you reach a point where you can humble yourself in front of everyone, you know that this is the time when your gift is going to open up. Another thing to receive guidance from spirit as well. There is good guidance from spirit and healthy guidance from spirit is to be able to do charity. So, when someone gives sadaqah or gives like a, a something good, something for poor people, their gift becomes stronger. Sometimes when I feel that my energy, for example, is going a bit low and I'm not seeing as much as I used to, for example, you get, it. it's like waves, okay? You get times when your energy is very high and then it can... It can lower down a little bit. So the remedy to that is to give the spiritual person uh, or someone a gift. I go, I, I search online, for example, for people who, can't, who are blind or are deaf or like they, they have problems. Any charity, mental health charities, I love these charities. I always give for these charities. Um, I, my, uh, the most that I give is for orphans and, and children who have, don't have parents. Okay, I always give them. But other charities, and I'm only saying this, I'm not bragging about what I give. Okay, I'm not bragging and I'm not trying to impress anyone. But I'm saying that if you are in a state where you can give charity to anyone, then prepare to be blessed a million times over and that comes to you in the form of knowledge and it comes to the person in the form of spiritual blessing. So when someone gives a donation to a sheikh or to, um, like for example in my sheikh, for example when I was younger and I used to learn from my sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah, which I have told you about, I, every time I used to go visit him, I used to give him something. And I used to, he wouldn't take it from me. He wouldn't ask me for it. But I would give it to him. I would put it underneath. He used to sit on the, on the ground and there was something that would be sitting on, for example. I would put it under that thing. Yeah. And when I gave it to him, I noticed that my spiritual gift would, would become stronger. 
every time I would become char be charitable to anyone, my grief strengthens. So to receive guidance from the Spirit, you have to do charity. You have to do a lot of charity. And that is why all religions encourage charity. And it's something good anyway. It will benefit people. It will benefit you not only spiritually, but physically. You'll feel it in your health. You will start to become even look better, be more beautiful yourself when you give charities, when you are nice to people, when you are humble, when you humble yourself like that. Prepare to be blessed and prepare to get the most powerful guidance from spirit. Okay. Once we reach these, these are the main things. Okay, that I that I ha that I know that open you up to receive guidance, some powerful guidance from spirit, and to be able to actually get. Like you see in my videos, spirits that you can take videos of, spirits that you can get in the sky, you will see lights in the sky, you will, you will get other, create, other people from God's creation, from other galaxies, from other planets who will open up to you if that's something you want. It's about being open. Whatever you are open to, you will receive guidance in that way. So some people, they can't handle, for example, seeing these lights. They can't handle, for example, hearing in their ear from the spirits. So these people get in their dreams, get the guidance in their dreams. So it's important for you to be able to handle it, to be open to it and to be at peace with it. Don't freak out. When you start getting the guidance, don't freak out. Because as, as soon as you freak out, this sends a message to the spirits, to the energies that you can't handle this. So they withdraw the energy from the person. So being brave in the right way, not by being rude or trying to break anyone else down or trying to walk all over anyone else. It's by actually being brave because you want to serve God and you want to serve the most high God of all creation. You want to serve people who are less fortunate than you. You want to give. And that is when you receive the biggest gifts and biggest openings. Okay. For someone to be blessed as well, they have to all of the time I say to people, don't try anything on your own. Always come to a teacher. Gain a following with someone that you trust, that you, you will get your guidance. Do, do istikhara about someone if you're not sure. You'll get your guidance and, you, and, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal to you what you need to do with regards to that certain person, whether they are good or bad for you and so on. Okay. And you can, if you have someone that can read you, that you can trust, you can come to me. I can read you for some, for these things. And I can also mentor you. I have a lot of students who I teach these things to and they, and they do very well. So you have to have a teacher and you have to be prepared for whatever that teacher is asking of you as long as it is, it is within reason and within your ability to do. It's like in the Quran, the, the, the story of Al-Abd al-Salih, when Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, was with the Abd al-Salih or the man who was close to God as described in the Quran and people say he is Nabi Allah al-Khidr and alayhi salam. Um, he said to him that that man, he took Moses, peace and blessings be upon him. I think it was Moses. Rem uh, correct me, you guys, if I'm wrong. I'm not sure about the story, but there was a, a prophet that was with someone who was close to God, who was higher vibrationally than the prophet themselves. And, when, and he went with them and the things that that man used to do seem to be look unreasonable to, to a normal person. For example, he made a hole in a, There was a ship on the water. He made a hole in the ship and sank the ship. Um, and then uh, after a little while, they walked with him and he, he did many other things. And all the time, the, 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 the man who was close to God was saying to the prophet, Peace and blessings be upon him. And I think Musa alayhi salam, Moses, he was saying to him, Lan ma'i sabra. You can't, you will not be patient with, that, with me. You will not be patient. You will not be patient enough. You will not be patient until he, they reached the point when the Abd al-Salih did something. And then the Prophet said to him, that's, you've gone too far. <laughs> that's too much. So he said to him, um, this is where me and you part ways. 
That's what the, the high vibrational man told the prophet. Okay, so they parted ways. So each of the people who are close to God, they all go through these times when they are with someone and they're getting mentorship from someone. As long as it is reasonable and you feel, and in this day and age, it is not against the law and you feel that is, this person is doing something right and not going too far with something, then obedience is important to learn in spirituality. Okay? The same thing as with doing spiritual work to open the third eye. I have to do protection for people, for example, and they have to pay for that protection. And whoever doesn't pay, doesn't get it. Because it's an energy exchange. It's not because I want to take people's money. I spend more on helping people than I do on myself. Okay, so when I take the, thing, the money from people, I, I buy a lot of stuff with it that is for the spirits, not for me. And um, this is important to understand that everything is energy and being generous helps the person's spirit open up in a big way. So I don't believe that I would have been this powerful if I was not generous with other people during my lifetime. I have this open generosity with everyone. Ever since I was a child, I used to take money from my parents behind their back and go and give it to poor people. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like a little Robin Hood, yeah? And um, my mom knew about it, but she liked it. So she stayed quiet. And then one day she came to me and she said to me, I know you're doing this. It's really kind, by the way, just so you know. You know, <laughs> but I know, I know about it. <laughs> and I never used to take too much. I used to like think in my head, okay, so I'm just going to take 10 pounds and give it to this poor man or poor woman. Um, they have orphans and stuff like that. And I used to get it to my car and go and drive to go and see that person and give it to them and then just leave. I wasn't doing it for a thank you. I was just doing it. I was just guided to do it. So people who are close to God will, will often do things that they are guided to do. So patience is important for us to hear from spirit and to get guidance from spirit. Okay. Operate in the energy of love. Wish for what's best for everyone. Try and understand people in a higher way. Be forgiving. Be for peace. If anyone is for strife or for enmity between people, know that they are not from God. Anyone who wants to degrade anyone else or hurt them with their words, with their actions or with their um, uh, advice or with anything, anyone who wants to hurt anyone else is not from God and they will not be blessed spiritually. Anyone who thinks that they are better than anyone, like I said, getting rid of the ego is important. So anyone who has an ego, who thinks that they're better than anyone else, who thinks that people should be under their shoes and should only do what they want and so on, so on, so on, that, that, no matter who the person is, even if they're a king or a queen, they will not be blessed spiritually. Real kings and real queens and real princes and princesses are known by their humility, by their kindness and by their love. Like I've told you guys, my mother is a princess. She is uh, the cousin of the king of Morocco. I look like the king of Morocco a little bit when he was younger. You know, if you search him, Google him when he was young and you see me in, my, in real life, I look very similar to him. So we have this royalty, but we've always learned that being royal is about being actually noble in your actions and not just in your title. The titles will go. What we will carry with us is our humility in this life and what we have done for others. Okay? So if you want to be a king or a queen and have real authority that is, comes from God himself and no one can come against you, you have to operate in the energy of love. And anyone, like I said, who tries to cause problems between people, between religions, between human beings, between animals, between anything... Okay, that is not from God and that person will not be blessed by God the Most High. Anyone who is loving and open and accepting of everyone, you, you have to know that that person is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the energy of God. When God told us in the Quran that the deen and Allah al-Islam it's not Islam as people understand the word Islam now. Islam is now become something uh, commercial and political. The word Islam means being at peace with God. So the religion, the religion that God accepts is being at peace with God. P 
peace with him. Islam is submission, peace to God, peace with God. Okay, peace with God and peace with God's creation. Once you are peace with the crea at peace with the Creator, you are at peace with all of His creation, and then your blessings and your spiritual blessings open up like a rose. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give you all power and open up your gifts. May He raise all of your vibrations and make you full of love and full of light. And believe me, anything you do in the energy of love, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not forget it, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will reward you for it. No matter what someone does to you, if you operate in the energy of love, believe me, he gives you victory in the end always. May he give you all victory and love and light and open up your gifts forever. This is all I have for you guys. And inshallah, I will see you guys in your next video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe you guys so that we spread this word to other people. It is ajr for you and thawab. And um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you all beacons of light and hope and love for humanity and for all people who are, who are on this planet and in the whole universe. Ameen. Salatu salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa sahabu ajma'in. See you guys soon. Thank you.